Hello, my name is Jim. This is my podcast, The Bloody Vegans. You're very welcome to it. Each week, I'll be traveling ever deeper into the world of veganism, discovering along the way a multitude of viewpoints from the political and ethical to the practical. I'll be doing this through a series of conversations, each aiming to further illuminate my understanding and hopefully yours of all things plant-centric. And this week's no different. I'm going to be chatting with Lisa Fox, the founder of Promote Vegan. Uh, She is a vegan consumer and business consultant uh, who helps educate businesses uh, on the plant-based marketplace. Um, so Promote Vegan, uh, or www.promotevegan.co, uh, is uh, a business founded by Lisa and her partner, David. And they help larger businesses uh, really kind of succeed in the vegan and plant-based marketplace. Um, they're official UK agents for the Vegan Society's Vegan Trademark. And they're also authors of the monthly business column for the UK's biggest vegan magazine, Vegan Food and Living. Alongside that, though, Lisa and David have more recently set up the Vegan Business Tribe, Uh, so www.veganbusinesstribe.com, and and they're really looking to uh, help smaller businesses as well as those larger ones um, with Promote Vegan to succeed in the, in all of the same ways with all of the same uh, skill set that uh, that Lisa and David can offer. So, without further ado, uh, here's a conversation between me and Lisa Fox from Promote Vegan and the Vegan Business Tribe. it has for for be for many of us um i first went vegetarian when i was 14 um i think a lot of vegans from my conversations with us uh, started at being vegetarian um and so i was 14 and i managed four fabulous years before i stopped when i was 18 um for some weird reasons that i, I don't actually even remember them all it's so long ago um, but it was i remember mainly i had an issue with um making other people's lives more complicated, which sounds ridiculous <laughs> now. Um, and I felt like I was putting people out by saying I'm vegetarian because <laughs> if I was going to somebody's house and they'd have to do something separate for me. And a lot of people back then um, thought the same way about vegetarians as they do now about vegans in terms of what do, they, what do you eat? <laughs> 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 Apart from maybe a block of cheese. So I didn't like being... Uh, the difficult one in the family all the time, for example, or with friends. Um, so I was putting other people's needs before my own and the animals, obviously. Um, and But I still couldn't think about what it was if I was eating it and I couldn't touch, like, raw animal flesh or, you know. Um, so I was pretty much vegetarian when like I lived on my own and was cooking for myself. But when I was elsewhere... <laughs> I wasn't if it made it easier for other people, which is, yeah, now I think it's quite ridiculous. Um, And it was for the animals. I just didn't, you know, I I loved animals and I didn't want to harm them. Um, And so I was on my journey towards veganism uh, from 14. Um, I know that it was about four years ago when I was going out somewhere for... um, christmas dinner uh, with family that i chose the vegetarian options for all three courses uh which i think was um it was three lots of cheese so it was cheese souffle (laughs) then cheese pie and then cheese board (laughs) and my sister thought i was insane (laughs) so after she mentioned it like four times as in you can't have cheese you can't have cheese you can't have cheese i caved um and said, okay, well, you know, like, you choose or I'll just have turkey or whatever it was that I said. And I just felt guilty as soon as I said it. And I went there and I didn't want the things and I wanted to change and I wanted to tell them when I got there. But I just, I didn't have that kind of confidence and conviction to be able to speak up for myself or for the animals at that point. And I also hadn't made the connection with dairy and, and the egg industry at that point either. Um, so it was when I met my partner in life and business, David, um, who was also vegetarian at the time. Um, 
and he was interested in veganism. Uh, we started speaking more about the animals. We had a mutual friend who kept bringing us really delicious vegan cakes, which always helps. <laughs> um, and we thought, actually, this could be a lot easier than than we thought. Um, you know, now we're kind of a, a family unit and, and a business unit. We don't need to think about making things, or I don't need to think about making things easier for anybody else anymore. Um, and so we decided to go vegan together at the same time. And we, so this was only 2018. And we started, uh, we decided to start at the same time the weekend that we were going to a vegan exhibition in London. Uh, and about about a week before we went down there, I watched Land of Hope and Glory and uh, Dairy is Scary beforehand. And, you know, that kind of busted every myth that I'd thought that I knew about like the dairy and the egg industries and these happy dairy cows you see in the um in the fields and things uh, and just seeing like the pigs in the gas chambers and just you, you get all these connections and it comes all at once uh that I kind of actually went vegan before going to the exhibition because after watching that I just I didn't want to be anywhere near like cheese <laughs> You know, it's like, well, don't, you don't want to throw these products out. Okay, well, we'll use things up before we go. But it was just a case of, okay, now I've now I've made all the connections um, and now there's no going back, which was wonderful. And like every other vegan I've talked to, it's a case of, I so wish that I'd have known all this beforehand. I so wish that I'd have made all the connections beforehand. I, I wish I'd have done this, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um and you just feel really bad about it, but you feel great that you've actually made those connections. Um, and I think that's a wonderful thing as well that I think I've, I've seen it in, in some vegan communities where they, they don't seem to be necessarily that supportive of each other and think that there's levels of veganism. <laughs> and it's, mm-hmm. all, it's always great to see people step in and say, hang on, <laughs> you know, we're all on the same boat here. We've all got the same vision. Um, you know, we all care. Uh, and it's it's great that the people who've been vegan for, uh, you know, 40 years are exactly the same as people who've been vegan for 20 days and who only made the connections and watched the documentaries, you know, 20 days ago. Um, and we all have the same mission. And it's wonderful. I think that it all got solidified for me even further when I went to a vegan camp out. Um, which was just amazing. And it was just fields <laughs> full of vegans and everyone was so nice to each other. <laughs> you, you just think, oh, this is what it would be like if the world was vegan. <laughs> um, and it was kind of sad coming out of that. It had only been a few days and I came out of that and suddenly you stop at a service station and you're immediately confronted with like the reality of the world and you know what you were buying a few years ago or... Um, and it's just such a juxtaposition that I think, again, anything that we can do that moves us towards that vegan world and helping to educate people in a really positive way is wonderful. I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, I, I'm intrigued as to like the, when you when you switched across, when you sort of made these discoveries, particularly mm-hmm. around dairy, as somebody who had been vegetarian for kind of ethical reasons, <laughs> did, did you... F- did you find that kind of almost more jarring than sort of yeah. anything you'd learned becoming yes. a vegetarian? Yes, because the the vegetarian things, even if you don't watch um, footage from you know abattoirs or farms or, or or any of those types of things, you can still imagine what goes on. You know, it's still not mm. a nice thought. It's still not something you want to be a part of when you connect with that, and you don't need to know really any additional information um it just solidifies or horrifies you even more if you do watch it or read about it um but with regards to dairy and like the egg industry as well i just felt like i'd been completely lied to completely hoodwinked um because it was just behind it seemed to be behind so many things and so many screens that um even as simple as and i felt so stupid afterwards but i've I've spoken to many people and they, some of them believed the same thing. So now I don't feel quite as stupid, <laughs> but I just, I just thought that when for, for dairy cows, that if they got pregnant once and I thought it was by, by natural methods, cause why would it not be? Um, 
that once they had um, calves, that if they were milked in a really nice, friendly way, again, I'm rolling <laughs> my eyes right now, um, then they'd just carry on giving milk for the next 30 years that they were alive, for example. <laughs> again, yep. still rolling eyes. Yeah. And and because all I see is the nice dairy cows in the field and you see the nice stickers on the dairy milk. And um, like, why would I... Why would I question that? And so when you realise the reality, um, it's it really is scary. Yeah. I, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> shocking how... Yeah, it, it it's totally shocking that bit. Like for, for how how good the marketing is around mm. around dairy that our, our, you know, our entire society is kind of built on this idea that it's it's a health product almost that <laughs> that everybody needs you know from yeah. a young age like you know as a as a dad of a, a very young young boy he's only, he's only two uh one of the biggest questions we get asked from friends and family is about is about you know well, what about his calcium you know <laughs> his, his bones are gonna fall apart you know if he if he doesn't drink the milk of another species mm. of animal which <laughs> okay that seems like an odd evolutionary thing to have happened yeah. but yeah i'll go with well, you we've just been um throughout our education about dairy and calcium and all the rest we've been indoctrinated um from everything that we've we've learned to where everything's kind mm. of the default and um we don't question it because why would you uh, there's no reason to question it there's no question marks there at all uh until you start meeting some people who know a bit more about it or until you start your voyage of discovery on youtube where you start getting um some videos kind of uh, suggested to you um you know if you're interested in vegan food for example which is quite often where it starts then you go down this rabbit hole and uh you know the the algorithms pick up that oh you're interested in veganism so not only will huh. you see more vegan recipes so this goes for Google as well and and Facebook uh, yeah. and the things that get suggested to you that it picks up that you're interested in veganism and it thinks oh okay you're vegan you're interested in more vegan recipes and then the more that it understands that you're vegan then it'll start to show other things um, which is how people sometimes start uh, from the plant based the plant based diet perspective and end up kind of moving along their vegan Mm. journey uh towards being uh actually a a full-on vegan lifestyle because they've uh during their search history they've ended up (laughs) you know finding dairy scary when actually that wasn't what they were looking for (laughs) um and and they weren't connecting with the animal side of it at all uh but just through uh it being picked up that they're interested in veganism you know they get suggested videos that they end up watching um i still do now <laughs> i still you know sometimes i'm on youtube for something completely different and things about veganism come up all the time uh because it knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as i'm interested in your perspective on that and i, I realize we're sort of jumping a bit in the chronology but it's the the opportunity is here to talk about this so i'll, I'll, I'll I'd, I'd like <laughs> no, to that's if good. that's all right yeah, um sure. you, you know as somebody who's kind of well versed in seo and marketing and the understanding of how a message is is sort of given to to people and how it's consumed and so on do you think there's a a potential sort of risk almost within the vegan community that we can think that we're a lot further down the the road (laughs) than we are yes yes absolutely i do um because you see we're in our own vegan little vegan bubble Mm. um and again these these algorithms like help to take (laughs) help to take us down that route um and keep us in that and i know for example when okay so a great example is when uh galaxy released their vegan chocolate bar and i just saw this everywhere i saw it in my news feed i saw it in facebook i saw it come up on people doing videos about it and unboxing (laughs) and eating (laughs) on youtube and um like people walking out with whole boxfuls of them from the supermarket no wonder it was sold out um and so I just assumed that because this was such a massive release and it was everywhere, um, and I should have known better, <laughs> you know, <but> I assumed <laughs> because I was seen everywhere and everybody was talking to me about it, the other people would know. And, you know, I spoke to my family and they said, they've done what? 
<laughs> and I spoke to some <laughs> other people. It. It's like non-vegans had no idea. And of course they equally had no idea because when they went into the supermarket, they're stocked in the in the like free from sections and not mm. next to the normal let's say normal, bad word. Ne- not next to the dairy uh, galaxy versions. Um so even if you know someone who who isn't vegan goes to get their dairy galaxy bar they're not going to see the vegan version because that's not where the supermarkets put it yeah Uh, so yeah i I think with a lot of releases uh with a lot of vegan news it's easy for us to think that um it's much more mainstream perhaps than it is uh and i think we've got to take into account that we're seeing a lot more of the advertisements and a lot Mm. more of the news because the algorithms are getting so uh, smart with regards to giving us information about what we actually want to see which is fabulous but yeah we've got we've got a long way to go but we're we're getting there <laughs> yeah uh, again i'm 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 completely blowing the blowing up the chronology here but <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just intrigued so i think that, well, let's mm. go with it so yeah you know supporting vegan businesses in that world i suppose there's a real challenge there and i'm literally top of my head thinking about this now for the first time and I appreciate this is like <laughs> you, you you have not thought about this for the first time uh but so I'm, so I'm intrigued as your perspective so as somebody's helping vegan businesses you know get beyond that 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 uh bubble if you like how how challenging is that then in the world of social media to get beyond the bubble you know beyond the <laughs> hashtag hashtag vegan you know that sort of thing um, well, it depends. The thing is, it depends if they want to. Because, right. I, I mean, we work with Vegan Business Tribe, we work specifically with small vegan businesses. And there's a whole array of different um, marketing messages from them. Like some of them lead with vegans, some are vegan businesses, but don't even mention it. Uh, again, it completely depends on their customer profiles, you know, who their target market is um, and what they're leading with. Um, so some of them do just want to stay within, uh, that vegan bubble. Uh, it's few <laughs> because, mm. uh, obviously it's, uh, I think in the UK it's 1% of the population is, is vegan. So of course, if you're a vegan business and you're only marketing to vegans or you think your product is only going to be suitable for vegans, then yeah, that's a very small space, which means you can be incredibly niche which works really well but again you've got to be remarkable rather Mm. than just again the market's becoming quite saturated and just being vegan or having a vegan product or a vegan service isn't enough anymore Uh, you really have to be remarkable you have to be something different you have to be connecting with people in a different way um, not just your product so I think with regards to um, being in that bubble it really suits some people really well if, if that's where you're mm. showing up, uh, if you're doing, uh, for example, paid advertising as well uh, in uh, Facebook or, or Instagram, it's re- they make it really easy to target. And so you can kind of filter out anyone who pretty much isn't vegan um, and just really focusing on your target markets. So it's probably easier for them in some ways to, to market their business than if they're going f- than if they have a vegan product or they're a vegan business, but they're trying to sell to a lot of non-vegans as well. Um, I think you probably need to be very, very clear in your marketing message and uh, you need to do a whole marketing plan with regards to that. Um, and to to get yourself out of that vegan bubble, I think it's easy, again, it's easy to stay in that marketing bubble with regards to the free stuff that you're doing and the content, but you just need to be really smart when you're researching. For example, if you're doing Instagram or if you're doing Twitter or something, you need to be really smart with the uh, hashtags that you're using. You need to be really smart with the other companies and people that you're connecting with uh, and see if there's some collaborations that you could be doing that can take you out of that vegan bubble. Um, to other people who are going to be interested, but who smash through through those barriers. Do you, do you think the rise of terms like like plant based and plant powered and you know the various sort of <laughs> versions of you know that I guess in 
for some people, for some folks within the vegan community are kind of almost problematic in a way because they yes. don't really they don't really do the 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 lifestyle justice. They only really speak to the diet, if you like. Do, yes. But do you, do you think they are kind of effective as a tool, at least in helping push beyond uh, the, the 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 bubble, if you like, and then bringing some people to the community? Do you think they have that a level of efficacy? Absolutely. They they do have they do have that kind of level of, of power to actually bring people in. Um, vegan, I think because it's uh, because it's becoming more mainstream, uh, I say that outside of the vegan bubble, <laughs> <laughs> slightly, slowly, but, you know, people are people getting know used what it to is the term. Though, yeah. yeah, well, that's debatable. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> they've heard the word. Again, Let's debatable. Put it that way. But yeah, they've heard the word. They kind of know what it means, even if it doesn't, or they're, they're happy to question um, yeah. about what it is. And there's so much information out there now. It's just becoming a more common word and the stereotypes are starting to disappear with regards to you know people hearing the word vegan and thinking you know hippie uh, <laughs> or yeah. you know sandals and things you know those those stereotypes are beginning to disappear which is wonderful but there is still uh, a certain um oh, not negativity but there's sometimes a certain stigma attached to yeah. the word vegan that some people don't like um, you'll even find this among some vegans who are starting to disassociate themselves from the word, but I think that's few and far between. Um, I think the stigma attached to the word vegan is kind of a fallout from times gone by, um, and it is generally for non-vegans. So again, we we have some content on this for, for our Vegan Business Tribe members because this is something that has come up quite regularly with regards to I don't know what to lead with with my messaging. I'm kind of putting everything in there or I'm leaving everything out because I'm just lost and I don't want to put people off. I want to attract the right people, but who are the right people? So I think, again, leading, if you, you can just leave with ve- lead with vegan if you are happy to lead with an ethical message and be really out there about it. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean confrontational um, mm. unless you want to be. Um, you can do it in a really, really positive way. But I think you need to bravely lead with that and say who you are and, and why you are. But if you are, that's potentially going to put a lot of non-vegans off. Um, if they think, that, well, this product isn't for me then, this service isn't for me. This is, for example, you know, a vegan hotel. Well, they won't want non-vegans. Um, so you have the flip side of that where plant-based is becoming a widely recognised term and something that's become quite friendly. Um, and it's, do you have, for example, if you're talking about food products, you're seeing plant-based foods that are now being placed alongside uh, meat products. They're being placed alongside uh, dairy products. Um, they're not in the free-from section. Uh, and it's about this term kind of becoming normalised and becoming inviting as a product label. And it's become synonymous with being healthy, which isn't always the case, as we know. There's no. lots of plant-based <laughs> junk food out there. <laughs> um, but again, it's the way that it's kind of been marketed by a lot of the companies. And I think it's, it's wonderful in some senses. I mean, you look at uh, what Derek Sarno's been doing with Wicked Kitchen at Tesco, mm. um, and he's been, you know, innovating and, and leading their their wicked kitchen range. And it doesn't, I think, in the in the small writing on the back of every product, I think it says vegan, um, but it doesn't lead with that. It doesn't make it obvious at all. Um, and it's it's more coming from the plant based perspective. And it's in and amongst all the different products. I mean, they're even bringing out products that aren't anything to do with meat replacement, for example, or, or meal replacement. They're bringing out. I saw grinders of of kind of. Uh, different types of peppers and things which was fabulous in amongst the herbs Mm. and i think again all this is just normalizing that and if that brings more people which it seems to be doing if that brings more people towards uh, a vegan lifestyle even if it's over quite a long journey again as i said myself i came from the vegetarian perspective and um over quite a long time Uh, so if that does lead people down that path and and into the YouTube rabbit hole or somewhere else, then then that's all the better. Yeah, I, I, I'm of that mindset too. But I, I definitely, 
I definitely come across lots of folks that I've I've either spoken to directly or certainly seen online who who feel very um, uh, to your point earlier. I think al- almost have rejected certainly have rejected the word plant based <laughs> and have even rejected the word vegan <laughs> actually as well. Yeah, um, because they've found almost the, the both both terms <laughs> problematic <laughs> yes and th- they are they can be and i think there are a, a lot of of us that are getting caught up in uh, nomenclature and mm. um in categorizing and having levels of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. things uh, or what's right and what's wrong and I think by and I, I understand where that comes from but I don't think it's a positive stance to take because we you know there are very few of us that were born vegan um, there were very few of us that instantly even once we decided we wanted to go vegan or if we went plant-based for health or whatever it was initially there are very few of us that made all those instant connections or very few of us that went vegan overnight at some point and instantly changed our laundry detergent as well, for example. Yeah. So if I think for, or, or got themselves a vegan mattress straight away, you know, mm. it's, I think for, for pretty much the vast majority of it, it has been a journey. And I think a lot of people forget that it still is a journey. Um, I mean, I don't drink uh, pop. I don't drink canned fizzy drinks or anything, mm. but I think it was only a few months ago that I found out that, that many people, um, Fanta flavors aren't vegan. It's the colors of the dyes are tested on animals. Mm. I didn't know that, so it's a good job I don't drink it. But, <laughs> but I just yeah. think we are constantly learning, and I think by by putting up barriers there and by saying, "Well, I don't want to associate myself with vegan anymore because some people don't understand it," that's not helping anyone t- towards being vegan. That's not inviting anyone that's not helping to educate other people or create a vegan world that's kind of ostracizing yourself from the very group who's trying to do that so i think if there's ways for us all to be able to work together as vegans and non-vegans to to bring about this vegan world all the better Uh, do you do you think like it's sort of this kind of almost uh, desire to to maybe be a little let's say pernickety over the the name <laughs> and the i don't know if that's the right choice of word but i've used it so uh, <laughs> it's a good you know, word let's stick with that <laughs> let's stick with that so do you do you think that comes a little bit from the the way in which we communicate nowadays is in in these short kind of bursts you know 240 mm. characters uh photos uh with you know hashtags underneath those kind of things and they sort of exist forever almost like you know once you once you've put something out there you've put it out there so the (laughs) ability for you to be allowed if you like to learn and grow and make mistakes uh that 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 sort of opportunity feels less than it probably ever has been before you know like if i think about if social media is it existed when i was at university (laughs) <laughs> you know, uh, or or not that I, you know. I caveat that not that I did anything particularly, <laughs> particularly <laughs> bad. But 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 I guess like if everything that we did was documented in some way, you know, there would you, you definitely sort of you know you, there'd be things you'd regret. You know, decisions you made and people you associated with and these kind of things. Yeah. And do you think that's the real? That must be like a minefield. I mean, it's a minefield as a as a sort of a private individual but as a as a business how do you even begin to navigate that without being sort of so uh, petrified to 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 make any statement um do you, do you find that's a challenge for folks <laughs> not to be cancelled i suppose um what you mean if if you're a vegan business uh, yeah, putting out putting things on out social or... and looking for a way to not not be problematic in some way and realizing that you know we're all on a journey and as people learn yes. it tends to be a, a retrospective yeah. like look back at something somebody said a year ago and was that <laughs> wrong or right you know yeah I think um again coming back to positivity um well you need to decide on on your brand voice and what your message is and make sure you stand uh, kind of 
keep to that. And if you have multiple people, for example, managing your social media accounts, then everyone needs to make sure that they're on the same page. Mm. Um, you don't want kind of two people working from a purely positive standpoint and make, you know, sprinkling like everything with as much vegan litter as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one person just saying, no, you can't be vegan because, you know, that's not going to work at all so you must have everyone working from the same page but I think again just positivity in general makes the huge difference no matter what stance you're taking what message you're putting out it's always about approaching it from a positive and welcoming perspective um I know there was something so it wasn't something uh that I commented on from a business point of view but um you know I'm active in in a lot of uh, vegan Facebook groups and there was somebody who posted about something or other and then I replied um just about the again the nomenclature about the difference between the word vegan and plant-based mm. just to add a bit of understanding about what they technically mean and the, dif- the difference between them because there seemed to be a lot of people not quite understanding um so I was just being helpful <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then um uh, somebody kind of jumped in and, and said oh well that's that's really um a harsh way of looking at it that's that's you know you've got definite lines between those two terms and there isn't really because well i'm vegan but i bought a leather item the other day and i'm still vegan <laughs> mm. and that kind of brought <laughs> instantly not from me but from, from a lot of other people because I'd, I'd i'd gone to sleep by then and i woke up the following morning and there were, there were like, kind oh of God. <laughs> there were so many comments from really angry vegans saying no you're not and and, and i thought do you know what and unfortunately this person had deleted that message and then all their replies i'm assuming because they got so much uh, negativity in response to them um and i can understand why people might get angry but the thing is they don't understand that this this person is on potentially a journey you know they're eating plant-based right now um they haven't connected with the animal ethics at this point they haven't uh, connected further down on that journey but do you know what they might just like i did and just like other people did um and so you're not going to encourage that journey by ostracizing them and making them feel horrible about themselves and stupid um you know you you welcome them into the group with open arms and say that's great you know i'm really glad you've started on your journey is there any way that i can i can help you um or you could give them a bit of information as well about how leather was created and where it comes from. Um, but again, it is just about trying to approach it from a positive standpoint. I think David, my partner, is wonderful about this. He says, um, be the kind of vegan that you wish that you knew at the start of your journey. Yeah, uh, that, and again, that's so it's, true. Yeah, it's remembering that because, again, if, if people are just... If you have this thing that you want to do and this group that you want to be a part of and this massive change that you want to make in your life and then pretty much everyone that you meet where you ask them a question or you say a viewpoint kind of um, is really, really horrible towards you, then that's not going to warm you <laughs> to being part of this group. No. It doesn't mean that you won't make those changes, but it certainly means that you won't participate in a lot of the things that are available. Yeah, I, I think it, he's, you know your, your point there that, that David made is is absolutely spot on. Mm. I, you know, I, I, I sometimes think, what is it that we're trying to do? You know, as yes. a as a community, are we trying to create more vegans and save more animals and <laughs> save the planet and etc., or are we trying to show people how woke we are, sort of thing? Like, yeah. <laughs> or you're not as vegan as I am, or you've only been vegan for two months, you know, you don't count. And it's just, it's, we've all got the same mission. We are all on the same journey and we're mm. going to be able to make a much better difference and much quicker if we're all working together. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree. I'd agree. I think, you know, sometimes because it's, you know the ideas can sometimes be oversimplified there's sort of an element of um there's no gray there's no shades of gray mm-hmm. there's no nuance to it so you know that person clearly you know made some made some errors maybe or doesn't quite get the the, the leather piece and they certainly <laughs> need some help with that and you know maybe i'm being kind but you know they they they're working they're working their way through that journey yeah but um 
does it need they mean that they need to be sort of ejected and cancelled mm. or do they need to be <laughs> helped along the way exactly know? with with uh, some nice carrot sticks and you know yeah. some again some more of that <laughs> vegan glitter and then some kind then some kindness and compassion for from us all yeah like, like you say that's what we we would all wish we'd had because we <laughs> yes. you know, those without sin cast the first stone, <laughs> exactly. as they say. But we seem to forget because, of course, we want to, as, as soon as we become vegan, really, and we make all those connections, we distance ourselves from our previous selves. You know, mm. again, I, I only went vegan in 2018 and it seems like um, a lifetime ago. I, I can't even imagine it. Um, yeah. And so because we distance ourselves so much, it, it can be quite easy to forget um, that we were there or the things that we thought or it's hard to get our mindset back into not knowing what we know and not feeling what we feel and so it takes a lot of empathy and compassion to to really be able to engage with people who aren't quite on that journey yet um, or who are but aren't fully vegan yet um, but I think it's really important for, for us all to do that as much as we possibly can I call that like the twilight effect. If you've ever, <laughs> if you've ever seen the film Twilight, are you admitting reference. to that? <laughs> it's a strange. I'm, I'm fully admit. I'm, I've embraced it. Uh, I've watched it many times. Uh, if it's on, I'll leave it on. But uh, <laughs> the, the, there's the whole phenomenon of when somebody becomes a vampire. They the rest of the the vampires need to keep them under wraps for a bit because they yeah. go a bit <laughs> go a bit bonkers <laughs> initially, um, and. Um, I, I I felt I exactly feel felt exactly like that as you described. You sort of you become divorced from your prior self and your mm-hmm. you know your your upbringing. And I I no, well I get it now. So everyone should be able to see what I can see. But I sometimes think, well, it took me thirty something years yeah. to to figure that out. So why would it? You know, you know, why be so harsh on anybody else? You know, exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense when we're able to to think about it logically. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. So I'll, I'll try and get back to the chronology because that <laughs> that would be good. We okay. went on a lovely detour there, but I think we covered lots of lots of really good we, stuff. We actually. did. It was. Uh, well, I certainly enjoyed myself. I hope you <laughs> did. Uh, so, so be good to get back to like vegan business tribe and i know you, you, yeah. you've mentioned a couple of bits and we've spoken a little bit there about how how you kind of do support businesses but what was the initial kind of inspiration for it and and, and what is it that you would describe vegan business tribe kind of does for yeah. uh, for folks in that community it, it was kind of accidental um in the best possible way um we myself and david uh, we went to a vegan fair at Scarborough where we saw John Arwen speaking. So he's a vegan activist and he, I think it was last last year, he did 54 vegan fairs in 52 weeks, which is insane. Wow. He's Busy. like a, a really <laughs> prolific uh, speaker amongst the, the vegan fairs and markets and things. And he talks about animal rights and, and what, what he gets involved in. And um, he said, so, so we sat there, we weren't particularly planning on going to any of the talks uh, we went round and we were at that point still towards the start of our vegan journey as we thought and uh, we were just looking at vegan cakes and <laughs> and chocolates <laughs> and um i saw some nice vegan boots and i thought well i can't really justify spending that and so we had all this chocolate and we went down and, and john Arwen was just starting to speak and so we thought okay well let's let's go in there and see what happens and eat our chocolate and uh, and by the time the talk had finished, we kind of just sat there and looked at each other and, and our world had just shifted a little bit, or quite a lot, because um, we'd, we'd kind of forgotten about our chocolate by that point. And uh, the one phrase that stuck more than anything else was that he said, being vegan isn't enough. And of course, we went vegan and we felt great about ourselves. <laughs> For a while, so yeah, we're not participating in this anymore. Uh, yeah, isn't it great? And uh, yeah, then when somebody said it's not enough, what do you mean? <laughs> and so he was, you know, you get the different analogies of well, okay, if you if you see somebody um, kicking at a dog and and you walk away and think if you don't see it, then you know 
that's that's one way of dealing with something. If you see somebody kicking a dog and you kind of uh, watch them but don't step in, then that's kind of being vegan. And if you see someone kicking a dog and you step in, um, then that's being a proper vegan. <laughs> you can't believe I just used that phrase. Uh, you know, um, but saying it's not enough to just not participate. Um, it's not enough to just kind of uh, decide that you're not going to eat meat and buy dairy anymore, for example. You've got to do something. You've got to tell other people or you've got to um, help change the world into a better place uh, to be able to make things change. Because otherwise, are you saying that it's just good enough to change your own life and to spare a few animals during your li- your lifetime? Or are you actually going to try and make a difference longer term and beyond? And so, yeah, we, we sat there, myself and David, and just looked at each other and said, <laughs> oh, that's actually a really good point. What do we do? <laughs> so it was a case of, oh, I don't know. Um, but we, we spoke to quite a few other people and it was interesting that um, a lot of people were, was, were starting to think about, for example, veganizing their skill sets. Uh, so you're seeing not just that now uh, vegan companies um, producing vegan food products and, you know, the usual snack bars or... Uh, skincare products or soaps for example you're seeing vegan accountants and you're seeing people taking the the business skill set that they have and veganizing it which we thought was really interesting and we thought okay well can we veganize our own skill set and the answer was yes so we decided we wanted to help uh vegan companies be even more successful and bring about a better vegan economy and all the rest Uh, Because, again, the more vegan companies we've got, then the more vegan products we've got, the easier it is for people to go vegan and stay vegan. Um, And hopefully then the easier it is to just edge us towards that vegan world. So there's more vegans when we leave this world than when we entered it. So if we can help to make that happen and help other businesses to make that happen, that's fabulous. Um, I mean, David's got a really strong background in business and marketing. He used to be the ambassador for the Chartered Institute of Marketing. He's written a lot of courses before and done marketing boot camps. And uh, between us, we've we've set up and run and sold like our own marketing agencies for over 20 years. Um, so, and myself, I had over 16 years in marketing across various sectors. So we set up a company called Promote Vegan. So we sold the, uh, David and I were running a successful marketing agency at the time. So we sold that and we created our vegan consultancy called Promote Vegan. Um, and we found, of course, instantly that vegan uh, companies and uh, small vegan businesses, the type that we wanted to support, don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the case. OK. Um, so we, again, figured out uh, the, the marketplace a bit more and where how we could offer our consultancy services uh, with regards to like, vegan products and vegan consumers uh, and found that we en- we've ended up working with non-vegan uh, high street brands to educate them on the vegan marketplace and consumer buying motivations and like help them understand how to better connect their vegan products with vegan consumers, which is fabulous. I mean, it's, it's not what we initially set out to do, but that's where the demand was and where people had the money to pay for our services. And we're now doing like, some really amazing things with companies through that. Um, so again, helping, I mean, a lot of vegans, when they first turn vegan, want their brand, want the brands that they're used to, to move with them, which is why the vegan galaxy did so well, just going back to that. Um, so, uh, we're helping companies to do that kind of activity, uh, because they don't often understand the vegan marketplace and that it's it's a it's a moving consumer base and their buying behavior changes i mean there's no other type of consumer where their buying motivations can change overnight um you know they people at the beginning of their vegan journey quite often want meat substitutes um or would be happy going into a their usual kind of fast food restaurant and uh whether it's six months down the line or they watch something and overnight their their buying behaviours changed. They don't want that anymore. 
and this continues to, to happen the further down the journey they go. Uh, and so it's important to ed- educate people on that. Um, but we were still at that point asking, OK, we still want to help small vegan companies. So how do we do that? And we were invited to talk early this year uh, when the expos were still a thing at Plant Powered Expo. And uh, we did a talk on how to create a successful vegan business. And we didn't know if there was going to be one person sat there and that might have been me (laughs) just (laughs) watching this or or we had no idea what the demand was for that. But it was a case of, well, we're going down to Plant Powered Expo anyway, because why wouldn't we? Um, It's a great weekend. We get to wander around and have lots of samples um, and get to get to talk to lots of interesting people so okay we'll do a talk this is great um and let's see if we can help anyone through that and so we did that and were incredibly surprised uh the there was standing room only uh hmm. in, in the auditorium and uh we suddenly realized okay there is actually based on this there's demands i mean some people came just for that talk uh on the sunday um so we realized there really is demand for both small vegan businesses that are established ones that are starting up people who are vegan but who just want to start a vegan business and aren't quite sure how and so there we realized how much demand there was potentially for small vegan businesses for our advice um and so we just had to figure out at that point okay how do we help them because we know that it can't be one-on-one because we know and we wouldn't ask them for the money to be able to do those kinds of sessions. Um, which is when we started to think about um, how to help small vegan business collectively uh, through a, a membership site. And that's when Vegan Business Tribe was was born. So uh, we started off with um, the mission of supporting vegan entrepreneurs with their small vegan businesses collectively by kind of giving them inspiration and providing them with knowledge from vegan business experts with weekly content through like articles and videos and interviews and amongst that actually creating a community of like-minded vegan entrepreneurs and all the content is created specifically from a vegan point of a vegan business point of view so it's centered around the unique challenges that vegan businesses have because there's so much generic business information that you can find out whether you go to youtube or you google it um but we weren't interested in just kind of rehashing information that's already out there we're looking at specifically how do we help small vegan businesses because nobody else is really engaging with them with 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 them in this way um and able to give them the information that they require so through Vegan Business Tribe, we're encouraging vegan businesses to be remarkable. That's what we want. And to work together um, to enable that as businesses. So we're seeing, for example, on the, on the forums, people just genuinely... That's the wonderful thing about the vegan sector. It's so unlike any other sector I've worked in. And everybody just wants to help each other. <laughs> Especially with the small vegan businesses, even if they're technically in competition with each other it doesn't seem to work that way they just genuinely want to share advice they want to you know you have one person who has uh, a specific issue or a specific problem and you'll have another business who's been through exactly that same issue and they'll be able to help with regards to that so for example you know my, myself or david could step in if it's thing to, things to do with uh, business advice and marketing and everything else but there are some specific issues for example one of our members was talking about postage. Uh, she was, she she pivoted and, and was starting to send out her brownies in the post and said, I've used this service, but, you know, I'm not getting um, great feedback and it's taking so long and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, one of the other members helped. Um, I think the other member actually messaged me at the time. And so I, I kind of commented back, have you thought about using this? And we've used this before. Um, and it's just fabulous to see so many uh, vegan businesses wanting to, wanting to help each other with specific information, even if that obviously wasn't about just specific vegan information, but just information in general about running their business and and being able to do it in a, in a really positive and successful way. So we keep telling members as well that that it's not about launching a business, it's about starting a movement. Um, they should think of their business as a movement um, because it's about standing out. Again, 
what I mentioned earlier about being vegan isn't being vegan isn't quite enough anymore because it's becoming such a saturated marketplace. Um, even though it's a niche, it is the amount of products and services that are starting to appear. I think within a very short amount of time, if if you're just doing what everybody else is doing, or if you're really not being remarkable, um, then that's going to cause an issue as time goes on. So it's about helping companies to realise what their point of difference is, how they can stand out, how they can create genuine relationships with their customers that's based on something more than just their product or their service. Uh, reminding that pe- them that people buy from people and you probably want to lead with yourself and put yourself forward, even if you're not that comfortable with it. And it's about creating something that genuinely matters and that people can connect with. Um, we talk about, for example, King's Grooming as a great example where King's Grooming, um, Blue O'Connor, he sells, um, it's, it's, a, it's an aftershave at the moment. Uh, I know he's working on some other products, but at the moment it's an aftershave that he sells. But um, he funds from the profits of that. He funds Talk Club, which um, promotes men being able to talk about mental health problems together and there are talk clubs physical talk clubs I mean I think they're doing it by zoom at the minute but there are physical talk clubs across the UK um and that it feeds all back into this cause because you're not just buying a product uh, you're supporting a cause you're, you're supporting something that that people actually care about and you're being a person about it rather than just a business and you're saying why it matters um so when you do that, like you naturally create brand champions and ambassadors from your loyal customers and they'll shout about you just because they love what you do and what you stand for and they love you and it won't cost you a penny. So this is the kind of marketing activity that can happen when you're doing the right kind of thing for the right reasons. Yeah, I'd, I'd love that idea of this, this community who are so supportive. I mean, I'm certainly... <laughs> in my own small way through the, through the podcast experience that, that the vegan community, especially those in business, are so incredibly supportive. Do, mm. you, do you think that's like, as, you, as you've, I suppose you've, you've, kind of, you've kind of pointed this out, but do you, do you think that's because of the, the nature of the sort of ultimate mission, if you like, that there is a sense of purpose that just doesn't exist in any other business sector that's shared in such a way? I think so, yes. Um, it's that sense of connection that, that uh, vegan business people have with each other, uh, that even if you're doing the same thing as me or your customers are quite similar to mine, we have the same mission. Or oh, isn't it great, another vegan business person? And we, we, all get, we all get really excited about just mixing with each other. I mean, that's why uh, we... Uh, uh, so when we started Vegan Business Tribe, it was going to be a paid for service. But because when we launched it was the beginning of the COVID situation, we then scrapped the membership fees because we thought, well, we can't possibly charge for this right now. You know, people are struggling to survive. Their businesses are struggling to survive. And, uh, you know, we want to help them. This is the whole reason we're doing Vegan Business Tribe. So we're not going to take any money from them. <laughs> Um, so what we did is we made it free for, for during the, the COVID crisis and just said, OK, well, let's see what happens. Let's see how many members we can get together. Let's see how many businesses we can help. Let's see how many businesses we can help connect to each other as well um, and help them through this time as much as we possibly can. And that's gone so well. I mean, we, we've we been going uh, well, for, for five or six months and we have... Uh, we have over 800 members and again to see the response from them and the feedback the positive feedback that we've had from them just with regards to being able to give them advice um again collectively so they haven't had to pay for it either it's just it's just wonderful to have been able to help them so we um we said okay well we also say to businesses you can do a lot more good with profit than you can with loss and obviously having to self-fund vegan business tribe isn't sustainable long term so we said okay we want to keep all the content and all the things that we're doing that i just discussed you know for you free we want to keep that going um but okay we would love to ask you as our vegan business tribe members um what do you want from us um in what way do you want us to shape 
the service that we're offering? Is there extra value that we could add to you and to your business that you would be willing to pay for? Um, so we just got everybody really, really involved, which is fabulous as, as the founding members. And we sent out surveys and, well, we asked people if they were interested in participating in a sur- survey to help to shape the VBT service. And we had, so of those 800, well, over 800, we had over 100 responses which is insane for a survey. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, yeah, I mean, I expected 20 at the most and that was on a good day. Over 100. And it wasn't just uh, ticking checkbox exercises. You know, there there was qualitative information in there as well. Um, So actually getting to sit down and read the really positive remarks about, about what their experience was with us and the other members so far and also what they want from us was just amazing, this kind of information to get back. Uh, so it really proved that, that the members were, were really appreciating what we'd managed to do and what the other members were doing with them so far uh, and really kind of invigorated us even more that, look, we're doing the right thing, we're on the right path here. Isn't it great that we've involved everyone? This is fabulous, this response. Um, and they kind of responded and said, yeah, we love all the free content that you're doing. We love that you're going to continue to do that. We'd love you to put like your videos on YouTube as well so that even more people can find you and, and have help from you and join join as members. So we've done that as well. We've created the YouTube channel. We put all our videos and interviews out on there as well. But they said with regards to paid tiers, um, some were saying, no, we just want the, the, the free advice we don't really need anything else from you at this point whereas we were getting a lot of people saying yes we do want more from you at this point and this is what we want and this is what we want to pay for um from uh they asked for vegan business courses so we're launching this month how to market your vegan business which we're calling a diploma because <laughs> uh, why not um, <laughs> a diploma uh, <laughs> instead of a diploma but um Again, it was a case of the one of the questions that we get asked the most is how do I get my business out there? So that's going to really help those members as well. Uh, we're going to be doing live live Q and A sessions with myself and David, so they'll be able to get. So as much as we don't have like one on one consultation sessions, they can then get access to actually be able to ask us things live. Um, so that's going to be fabulous. And then we. Ha- going to have uh so starting this month as well we're going to have monthly zoom networking with the other vegan business tribe members because again they want to not just network on the forums they want to be able to meet each other they want to get to know each other um and then possibly get to know each other off the platform as well and just genuinely help each other so the more people we can connect with each other that's the better so we're launching that for 12 pounds 99 a month um which again should be uh drop in and drop out uh, so it's not going to be, yeah, you need to sign up for two years. Because, <laughs> uh, again, it's giving people that flexibility to be able to choose what they want and when they want it. So if it's a case of, OK, well, actually, I'm not interested in the Q&A or the networking, but I want to do your course. OK, well, it's going to take me three months to work through your course. Well, that's fine, because that's still great value for money. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a, it's an amazing prospect. They were just, you know, when I've looked through the the website and the amount of content that you're you're kind of going to produce through these courses mm. uh, that 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 subscription is is truly truly remarkable uh, <laughs> at, at that price and i can imagine there would be a whole heap of uh, of marketing businesses and consultancies who would charge an awful lot more yeah uh, for that kind of content and we saw that and that was the thing it's like the these people want that and need that but whether they're looking for a course and then kind of consultation with a with an expert then that's going to be really expensive or they were looking for an online course like well okay there aren't many online vegan courses for vegan businesses and the ones that there are at at the minute are kind of one-off costs and it can be quite it's something that a medium or large size vegan company wouldn't bat an eyelid at but if you're you know making soap in your kitchen (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't afford something like that. Whereas if you've got the opportunity to, if, if you're going to do this full time, this course, and you're going to pay £12.99 for it, <laughs> then if we can help somebody at that level, then that's fabulous. And maybe they'll do this course and actually get involved in the Zoom networking and think actually when I'm when I'm 
making more of a success of my business, which of course I will, because I've just done this amazing course, (laughs) (laughs) then once I'm earning more money, I would love to come back and keep giving £12.99 a month because I'd love to be involved and and to support VBT, you know, the the way that they helped me in the, in the beginning. So it's, it's all just quite fluid and quite circular. Um, So again, if, if people get what they need and then want to leave and that's fine fine too but hopefully you know we've been building a lot of uh, loyal members and, and followers who are really just very supportive and appreciative of, of what we're doing as we are of them and their businesses um, so it's just great again to just be able to support each other so it was really important for us to not price people out of the market um, because it's a bit like penalizing them for being small vegan businesses when those are the people we're trying to serve <laughs> why would we do totally. that yeah yeah um so it's just it's just a market that's that's it's really difficult to serve because again they don't have the money to be able to pay for one one on one and luckily between david and i we have the the skill set and the and the passion um to really be able to to help them to be able to do this collectively and to do it really well yeah well i, I, I like i say i think it, it's incredible value really it really is and um and, and we'll definitely pay pay it forward in terms of supporting so many vegan businesses and i'd imagine that at this time as people are probably in a very reflective place and and maybe mm. in a in maybe in a very challenged place uh maybe people are looking for changes of career direction and so on and so yes. forth I, I can I can imagine actually it's only gonna that need for support is only gonna grow and grow as as folks think Do you know what maybe now is the time to to start that venture I wanted <laughs> to start or yeah. uh, or perhaps take a different tack with the one that I'm in you know yeah we've been seeing that a lot I mean uh, there's there's small vegan businesses who've been doing very well during this time we've got members who have been struggling we've got members who've kind of stopped one vegan business and started another. Uh, just in the past few months Uh, and then we have people who said yeah I don't have a vegan business yet but I want one (laughs) and I'm not quite sure what to do yet or I have this idea but I need help with it so we've got we've got people who've been doing all sorts of different things during the last few months in fact we've we've had members just saying you know I don't have a vegan business and I don't plan on having one but I want to support other people which is, which is amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah which is the, again that's not something yeah that's not something that that myself or david expected at all so that kind of response has been has been wonderful but i think again with regards to what we're offering it's not good enough just to tell uh, our members that they need to be remarkable we need to be remarkable as well and so you know we we mm. we we live by our own advice we have to um so yeah it's, a, it's about doing everything that we can to be as remarkable as we can to be able to help as many small vegan businesses as possible. And I guess that's the uh, the pressure as well that you, <laughs> that you guys have, have, <laughs> have, have chosen to take on and, and I think are well equipped to deal with. But there's definitely a pressure of, like you say, if, if you're going to sign up to this, I kind of want to see all of these techniques in action from you guys, you know, like <laughs> I can imagine that's, you know, in if it's not in your customer's sort of mind, in the community's mind, it's probably in yours, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, but no pressure. It's all behind the scenes. No, exa- exactly. <laughs> it's the, the skill of making it all look effortless, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, so just just sort of finally, because you know, time is time has definitely got away with us uh, <laughs> with our various uh, detours. Well, induced by me, so my apologies. <laughs> That's been but, fun. <laughs> <laughs> but where whereabouts would we go about finding out some more information maybe um getting involved uh and, and then eventually taking this step into the the 12.99 a month kind of course yeah, sure. and, and so on so if you if you go to www.veganbusinesstribe.com then that will just take you to the home page and you can sign up there and again that sign up is just for the free membership so you'll automatically get added to our email list Um, and we'll send you out the weekly emails with the new content that's coming out Uh, you can unsubscribe from that if you want to (laughs) if you're not an email person Uh, but it means that you'll have a login and so you'll be able to see um, all the content that's there Uh, so all the articles that that I write all the videos that that David does um, all the interviews that we've been doing with other vegan businesses other remarkable small vegan businesses to help to inspire others Um, and then also on the site 
there's currently a courses page at the top you'll see in the menu where you can pre-register for the course uh, and register your interest in in the paid tier um, when that layout will probably be slightly different when uh, when it launches but again if you just go to the home page then you'll be able to to sign, sign up to either the free membership or to the paid version well, I, I definitely couldn't recommend it highly enough. Like, hmm. I've I've signed up myself uh, for the, uh, the 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 um, uh, for the service, and uh, I'm definitely taking a very close look at that VPN. <laughs> it looks pretty. It does look pretty awesome, to be honest. So, I'd encourage anyone to take a good look at that, and I'll put a link in the show notes as well for Fabulous. for folks to take a look at. Yeah, if people just want a just want a taster without signing up to to even the free version, then they can find us on on YouTube. We're just Vegan Business Tribe, and they can find all the videos that we've done on there. Again, they won't be able to see the the in depth articles that that I've written on there, but they'll be able to at least see the videos and some of the content that we've done. There's some great discussion points on there on the on the YouTube yeah. channel as well. <laughs> Defin- definitely worth taking a look. So, Lisa, thank, thanks so much for your time. I know you're super busy, uh, pre- certainly preparing uh, all the course material, etc. cetera, will be coming out soon. So a huge thank you uh, for your time. And, uh, oh, thank you very you much. Again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>